In the year 2025, a higher education is the birthright of young adults nearly everywhere. Scholarship is dazzling, IT is ubiquitous. The dream of universal educational access is within reach. At the same time, the fate of many familiar colleges and universities has waned. Gigantic commercial educators span the globe, while freelance educators now package and deliver courses directly to students online, on campus, and in virtual worlds. The road to 2025 is a long one. In China, Confucius teaches his disciples veneration of one's parents, love of learning, and regard for those customs, rituals, and institutions that make for civility. In Hecademos, Plato's academics advocate a philosophy called skepticism. Learning is personal. The bond between teacher and learner is sacred. Kings and popes charter the first European universities at Bologna, Salamanca, Oxford, Paris, and elsewhere. The idea of university as a gated city is born. Now students are mobilized to come to the academics. Johannes Gutenberg combines movable type, oil-based inks, and a new printing press to foster the spread of literacy in Western Europe. In the 16th century, the Universidad de Santo Domingo and Peru's Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marco bring higher education to the new world. Harvard College is established by vote of the Great and General Court of Massachusetts Bay Colony only 16 years after the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. But women of the New World must wait 100 years before Oberlin College becomes the first institution to open higher education's gates to them on a regular basis. The University of Berlin organizes the world's first research university. By uniting teaching and research in the work of the individual scholar or scientist, the university becomes a model, a magnet for international talent, and a source of national pride. Abraham Lincoln signs the Morrill Act, making access to education in the practical arts of engineering, agriculture, and military science accessible to tens of thousands. The act fosters an industrial revolution and creates an educational system that will educate millions in the years to come. The first junior college is established at Joliet High School in Illinois. A distinctive feature of these institutions is their accessibility to women. The GI Bill of Rights brings war veterans to campus, while at the same time computing behemoths with names like Manchester's Baby, ENIAC, EDVAC, and Worldwind are powered up at universities like Manchester, Penn, Harvard, MIT, and elsewhere. A new tool for higher learning is born. The U.S. Higher Education Act creates a national system for student financial aid, while a civil rights movement focuses new attention on the racial integration and diversification of American campuses. Worldwide, campus unrest spreads in protest to the war in Vietnam. Scientists at four U.S. universities power up the first nodes of the ARPANET. The Internet is born. The U.K. throws open the gates to 25,000 students by establishing the Open University. In 1976, the University of Phoenix opens higher learning's gates to the working adult on the premise that information age workers would flock to an educational offering designed around their busy lives. At CERN, Tim Berners-Lee weaves together the thousands of interconnected threads of the internet into the World Wide Web, while two Stanford University students work on a web search engine they call Google. The new century finds the University of Phoenix with the largest enrollment of any U.S. university. MIT announces that its Open Courseware initiative provides a new model for the dissemination of knowledge and collaboration among scholars around the world. 
U.S. Republican leaders, complain that colleges feel justified in routinely kicking middle America in the teeth. While higher education is central to China's roadmap to the future, and the European Union's Bologna Accord lowers the barriers to European higher education, many universities are struggling. Venerable Oxford University contemplates requiring future students to sign legally binding contracts, making attendance at tutorials and lectures compulsory. Apple asks the world to say hello to iPod. Easy to use portable memory makes Apple the world's largest music distributor. iTunes U becomes a powerful distribution system for everything from lectures to language lessons, films to labs. The iPhone transforms the telecom industry. The tools of scholarship can now be stored in a student's pocket. Google digitizes the collections of the world's great university libraries and promotes Google Scholar, a database of scientific and scholarly journal articles. One university official says, for the first time, everyone will be able to search the written record of human knowledge. The company establishes the Open Handset Alliance and announces Android, an open source software and development framework for applications running on handheld devices. 2011 may be remembered as the inflection point. The world mourns the loss of Steve Jobs, even as the number of iPhones sold passes 100 million. Google now boasts 12 million scanned books and more than 300,000 applications run on 190 million Android devices worldwide. This year, online retailer Amazon now sells 105 e-books for every 100 printed books. Two Stanford University instructors offer a course on artificial intelligence to all takers. 58,000 students from around the world enroll. 2011 is also the year that students in U.S. universities spend an average of 106 minutes per day on the Facebook social network. One reporter quips that it appears that today's university students see more faces than they see books. Total student debt is expected to exceed $1 trillion before year's end. 2012 is the fourth year of the global recession. Pell grants are cut while politicians call for increased accountability, accessibility, and affordability as college completion rates decline. Quality is also a concern. This is the year that China's research publication output exceeds that of the U.S. Led by MIT, the Open Learning Alliance is formed. Students taking courses on the Open Courseware catalog can now petition for degrees if they follow prescribed curricula, meet testing requirements, and pay tuition. The Apollo Group sells Phoenix Online to Google, creating Google Phoenix. The new division integrates Google Scholar, Google Apps for Education, the Phoenix Online Standard Curriculum, and a growing collection of digital learning objects, all shareable through the Google Plus Collaboration Network. Google Phoenix also creates a digital badging system, giving those who earn them the kind of credential that a college degree once conveyed, without having to go through the time and expense of earning one or more diplomas. Not to be outdone, Microsoft completes acquisition of publishing giant Cengage. The new Microsoft Education Division brings together Microsoft's new Microfolio, a secure, cradle-to-grave personal information repository. And CEO Steve Ballmer announces that Xbox game designers will work with Cengage smart content developers to electrify the written word and turbocharge learning. Disney, Sony, and Apple Computer complete a merger. The new Disney Edutainment Division incorporates the iTunes Library, Pixar Studios, Theme Parks, the Sony Gaming Division, and the extensive Columbia Pictures Film Archive. The Disney Foundation begins to acquire a number of struggling campuses worldwide, promising to invigorate them with Disney magic and to develop a catalog of courses that will entertain while they educate. Scientists announce a flexible contact lens with an imprinted electronic circuit and lights. Humans now boast optical zoom eyesight, 
high-def recording and GPS-based augmented reality. The lenses eliminate the need for high-resolution computer displays. Mobility has taken the ultimate step. Hollywood talent impresario Michael Ovitz announces the formation of Faculty One, a talent agency for maximizing the free agent value of top instructors. Faculty One's proposition is simple. As the power of educational providers rises, great instructors need someone to look out for their interests. 13 Nobel laureates sign agency agreements. The venture fails dismally when course content producers discover that professional actors have far greater media credibility than actual scholars and scientists. The Screen Actors Guild establishes a thriving educational section. The Guild's first course catalog is released as Learning with the Stars. Disney Edutainment announces plans to enhance the production values of the Open University's courses through the Disney and Pixar Studios. OU courses will now be delivered on the new PlayStation 6 gaming platform. In a stunning competitive response, Google introduces Synfac, a no-bot generator that creates artificial instructors based on profile data and course performance, achieving a psychologically convincing simulation of one-on-one -on -one instruction. Google quickly releases SinStu, a companion product that populates each student's class with artificial peers designed to elicit appropriate study behavior. Student chat sites and Facebooks now brim with speculations about which of their peers are humans and which are synthetics. Google Phoenix becomes the first faculty-free institution of higher learning. One Harvard psychologist argues, a post-social generation demands and deserves a de-peopled learning environment. By 2025, millions of people have access to a rich variety of learning opportunities face-to-face, -face, online, or in synthetic worlds. Corporate educators like Disney, Google, and Microsoft compete for a worldwide market by creating dazzling courses crafted by renowned faculty, filmmakers, game designers, media specialists, and others. Traditional institutions have banded together in consortia like the Open Learning Alliance. Higher education's conundrum of providing universal access with mass personalization has been largely addressed. Or has it? By 2025, all but the wealthiest institutions have standardized their curricula under pressures to reduce costs and prices. The commercial educators, rich with advertising and license fees, offer courses at prices a fraction of that of their traditional counterparts. Many bucolic campuses have been acquired by the newcomers and are operated like academic theme parks. Few international students come to the U.S. for study, as Chile, China, India, Australia, and Saudi Arabia compete to keep or attract the world's brightest students. Many institutions license the lower-priced course options from the commercial suppliers or modify open-source offerings and focus on the social aspects of the university experience. Researchers can sign classroom work to teaching assistants and retreat to the more exciting and remunerative research realm. 2025 witnesses the first higher education content scandal. One global educator has systematically insinuated hateful and inflammatory images and texts subtly throughout the curriculum. In 2025, access to higher education is nearly universal. Quality is high, cost is lower, and neither distance nor financial constraints pose barriers. Learning outcomes are assessed regularly and consistently. Taxpayer cries of waste and abuse have abated. The intellectual and institutional diversity of American higher education is now largely gone. Course credits are largely interchangeable because many learn from one of a dozen standard curricula. But in a sheltered garden, within a wall adorned with statues, temples, and sepulchers of illustrious men and women, another educational idea is born. 